live from Studio C. Our new digs. It's in our new digs. Studio C is Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night show all about cigars. And we're going to start out tonight with one of our Eduardo Barber Bowls, and T's going to tell you all about it. T. T. No. Did you know? T. Hey. He's um, well, this It's a double wrapper. It's a Maduro and a, uh, is it Ecuadorian? It's Connecticut. 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 Ecuadorian. Okay. I was close. Um, I love this cigar. It's a quick smoke. That's why we call it the quickie. Um, go ahead, Rob. What else do you think about it? <laughs> it's a Dominican filler and binder. So, with a uh, Dominican Maduro wrapper and a Connecticut seed Ecuadorian wrapper. It's got two. It's got a barber pole. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Close so, enough. It's close. Yeah. It's called a barber pole. Quickie. It's only, uh, what, 4 by 40? Yes. 4 and a half by 40 Something inch? like that. 4 by 40. Like 4 by 40. Yeah, it's, um, it's called a quickie because it only takes about uh, 10, 15 minutes to smoke. Yeah, basically, if you don't have a lot of time, a, a quickie's the way to go. Yeah, well, you, no matter how and much time you have, on well, never mind. <laughs> uh, I gave you the line, Paul. That's right. You blew it. I felt like... I thought he did a good job. I thought I did it right. Yeah. You did. Ah, moving along. <laughs> so do you want to... What do you think about it? I like it. I always have liked the concept of a quickie <laughs> cigar. <laughs> cigar, right? And, like and that. I, I particularly like the barber pole because the flavor changes up a lot. It does. It does. Yes, it, it does. absolutely does. And almost, Paul, almost every other puff. And Paul, yes. at your age, a quickie is about all you can do. If I'm lucky. If you're lucky. Uh, it's good. I, I actually it's spicier than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. It's got. I can really. I can actually feel this on the, the tip of my tongue. And you're right. The flavors do change. And I guess we'll, we we always get the Maduro at the the head of the cigar, the Maduro part of the wrapper. Or is it yes. sometimes going to be the usually yeah. on these the ones they make is usually the Maduro. Is Maduro, yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. You get a different flavor other ones. Yeah. It's Very a no, it's it, it, to me it's a novelty cigar, and if you like the rotating taste, and I do. Uh, it's a cool little cigar. It and is. It for how much is it? Two forty nine. Two forty nine. Two forty nine. Oh, I like bar well, with tax. Two forty nine oh, okay. cigar. It's very very good. Um, I like it. I like it because it is. It's complex um, with a different wrapper uh, on it. So I like it. It's very smooth. Burns perfectly. It's very good. Yeah, it does burn perfectly. Yeah, it and, does burn nice. and we do make them with a regular Connecticut wrapper, a Corojo wrapper, and a Maduro yes, wrapper. Yes, we do. Yep. True. And these are also made in our little family factory in uh, Santiago. Santiago, Santiago in the Dominican, Dominican Republic. Republic by loving, caring hands. And you can see all that on our website, which just happens to be at cccigars.com. That's double, double C, C cigars.com. Cigars. Dot, dot, dot <laughs> and now we're going to... Uh, we do make these one at a time. So <laughs> We do make them one at a time. So, with yeah, loving hands. Yes. Are we going to rate this now? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Paul, we'll start out with you. I give it a four and a half. It's perfect little smoke. Yeah, given what it is, the price, the the taste, I'll, I'll give it a four point two five. I give it a four and a half. I also give it a four and a half. Four and a half. So we're at four point four six. Sorry guys, I'm sorry. I smoke these all the time What's at this time. You store? ruined it. Yep. What's wrong with you, man? You brought it down. Yeah. Brought it down. All right, the lovely Miss T will tell us about our next cigar. Yeah, our next cigar is a Brick House. It's actually a Nicaraguan Puro with a Nicaraguan Habano, Habano wrapper. The sizes are Churchill, Corona, Gordo, Robusto, and Toro. And the taste profile on this one is notes of earth, cedar, pepper, and coffee, complemented by a toasty, slightly sweet finish. Toasty. Sounds like a really good <laughs> cigar. You know, a lot of people don't know about the brick house cigars like they walk right by it in the humidor i mean really? they yes they don't even look at it and i have to direct their attention to it and as soon as they smoke one they say oh i'm so glad you showed me the brick house was this a, i think this was in a top 25 a few years ago yes it, 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 was. Was. it was it was yeah. absolutely it's i never, think it was a 92 of, if i'm not mistaken probably and it's always it's every year it may not be in the top 25, but it's always in the, t the, the top value cigars yes. that they have. Because this is yes. not a very expensive cigar. No, no, not at all. No. I think this is only like five cents. Yeah, in the $5, five dollar range. Something like that, yeah. Good value. Yeah. Very size, yeah. good value. And it's, it's a very J. tasty cigar. It's made by J.C. Newman. Yes. Yep. And it's one of the first two cigars to come out of their Nicaraguan factory. This and the El Baton. And probably why I like it so much is because it's a Puro. Mm-hmm. It's actually a, th a little thicker for your normal Robusto. It is. Almost so a 54. double Robusto. I think it's a 54, 54 ring gauge. 54 yeah. ring gauge. This is good. I didn't want yeah. to put the barber pole down. Very nice. Damn. 
Thank you for Very doing nice. that. I'll pick it up later. Uh, I guess we have uh, Paul in the fields now. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Paul. You, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm busy doing something far more important. Yes, we'll sure. give him time to take the mud off his boots and light a cigar. And we're going to hear this week all about American-made cigars. The mud on his boots is from the good old U.S. of A. Yeah, yes. that's it. American mud. American mud. <laughs> Chef flags. First yeah. of all, if, if we go back historically, in the 16 and 1700s, there were very few cigars here in the United States. Well, it wasn't the United States yet, but there were very few cigars here. And Americans weren't really very hip on cigars back then mostly because the tobacco that was grown here, and tobacco was a very important crop in the U.S., uh, the tobacco wasn't really suitable for cigars. It was mostly used for snuff and for chew, and so Americans wanted to consume American tobacco, and of course it was much less expensive than imported stuff. Um, eventually, cigars came here, and they were mostly in the hands of the well-to-do. They were mostly Cubans and Dominicans. And it stayed that way right up until the end of the Civil War. And at the end of the Civil War, all of a sudden, the industry divided into two pieces in the U.S. Uh, and the two pieces were high-end luxury cigars, which were primarily from Cuba and were called Havanas and cigars that the average Joe could buy and smoke. And those were pioneered by pioneers, actually. They were uh, the folks moving out west after the Civil War, riding in their Conestoga wagons. And in fact, that's why inexpensive cigars, beginning back then, were called stogies, because nice. the guys in the Conestoga wagons. Anyway. They continued making cigars in the United States, and that business grew very, very fast. In fact, by the end of the 1800s, virtually every city in the United States had hundreds of cigar factories. There were 42,000 of them in the United States at that time, uh, although most of them were two or three women rolling cigars in a house. <laughs> but nonetheless, there were some major brands back in those days, like J.C. Newman, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Fink out of Texas, and Bayouk. Those are names you might not know, but they had many, many brands. If there were 42,000 factories, there were over 150,000 brands of cigars at the time. Paul, but, weren't, weren't there clusters of factories and cities that you would not normally think of as yeah. hotbeds of cigars? Purposes. Like Cleveland, Ohio yeah. in particular, yeah. and uh, uh, some in Connecticut and in Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton. Also, Bayouk, Bay wasn't that in Philadelphia? Bayouk was, Bay was in Philadelphia. A Philadelphia There's a lot of factories they in were Philadelphia. The original, yeah. They were the original makers of Philly cigars. Yes. Percocet, too. Right up yeah. the street, though. Yeah, everywhere. Red Lion. Red Lion, yes. Red Lion, yes. A lot of cigar factories. Or manufacturers. The uh, U.S. made cigar industry grew, uh, continued to grow a lot right up until World War I. And it, World War I actually had a very bad effect on cigars because all of a sudden the government was putting cigarettes in our uh, in our GI's mess kits and sending them now? off to, yeah. to oh, fight the God. war Holy with cow. cigarettes in their kits and that's really the first time that cigarettes surpassed cigars in popularity. Um, the, w the cigar industry's answer to that was to introduce machine-made cigars and try to bring the price down and bring the volume up. And for decades, machine-made cigars uh, really supplanted uh, premium cigars or handmade cigars as the dominant factor in the industry. That changed again in the 1950s. And there were a couple of things that caused that to happen. Uh, one of the biggest things that changed the, 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 the complexion of the cigar industry in the U.S. was that uh, one guy who had a virtual monopoly on tobacco in Cuba uh, got into a, a bit of a tussle with the Cigar Rollers Union in Cuba and announced to them that Unless they did things his way, he was going to close down his whole operation in Cuba and move it all to Trenton, New Jersey. And he, and he did. Wow. Trenton and, makes. 
and uh, it was the world and takes. the world takes. Yeah. And uh, that brought a whole lot of premium cigar making back to the U.S. And then, of course, when uh, the revolution took place in Cuba and Castro rose to power, a lot of the best cigar makers in Cuba came over here and began rolling cigars in Little Havana. And that was the birth time of some of the brands that we know well as Miami-made cigars, like uh, La Gloria Cubana and mm. even Padron, and there were others. And they emerged real big in the 90s during the cigar boom. They became the major brands. The boom put so much demand on those little factories in Miami that most of them were bought up by the big, big cigar companies, and the factories were moved back out into Latin America where they could produce in serious volume. Mm -hmm. What caused the boom, do you know? Nobody really knows. Some people say it was the, the launch of Cigar Aficionado magazine, mm -hmm. but I think that's uh, maybe trying to put too much credit in one place. I, you know, give the devil his due. I really think that Marvin Shankman with uh, Cigar Aficionado had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Because once the Hollywood stars started finding cigars fashionable, it not only helped, obviously, to sell the magazine, but it also helped the, you know, the, the regeneration of large amounts of sales in the United States. From 1992 to yeah. 1996, the industry tripled yep. yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. Wow. And we, we can't say the quality tripled. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, there were tons of... There were a lot of bad cigars yeah, back just then. Yeah, rogue Sad manufacturers grabbing up oh. crappy tobacco and used rollers. So yeah. most of the cigar making industry had then left the United States during the boom and it's only come back on a very small scale in Miami there are some big boutique brands mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned uh, Tatuaje is one of those uh, Padilla? And a, a Padilla, Padilla makes some cigars in yeah, Miami right. Uh, and in fact, one of the originals, uh, La Gloria, well, not La Gloria, but Ernesto Padillo, is making cigars on a small scale again uh -huh. in Miami. Uh, and of course, there are also the Amish cigars, the Pennsylvania Dutch yeah. type cigars yeah, yeah. that are still being made. John Hay. John Hay. In hey. Lancaster. Hey, hey, right. hey, out in Lancaster. Uh, still today, there's very little American grown tobacco in any of the cigars that we smoke other than the Amish tobacco and the Amish style cigars. The only exceptions to that being, of course, the uh, Connecticut tobaccos, right. the, the Connecticut Shade and the Connecticut Broadleaf, and some Pennsylvania tobacco, uh, the Pennsylvania Broadleaf, which is growing in popularity. So that's my story for today about American-made oh, cigars. Well, let's save, nice. the, let's save the rest for next week's show. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, the rating and the review of the Brick House. Oh, we're not going to do our topic first? Oh, no, we can Hold do it. Okay. We can do a topic your call. first. Your call. Oh, your call. What are you yeah, making Yeah, beginning smokers. Like, what do they need? What, you know, what do you right. need to get started? Yeah, that this, this was a suggestion, actually, from one of our viewers that there are a oh. lot of beginning cigar smokers, and they said we should, we should do a topic or we should talk about that. Um, so if, if you're just beginning, um, go through the basics. Uh, first, you're going to need a cigar cutter. This is just one type. I don't have, you can also use a punch cutter. Um, there's also a V cutter. We used a V cutter on our last show. Uh, you need that to clip the end of the cigar or the foot. Um, and then, of course, you're going to need, oh, the head, I'm sorry. You like uh, the foot. Yeah, <laughs> top of mind. Uh, you're also going to need lighter, obviously. Uh, I prefer a soft flame. Um, I'm indoors, so it's very easy to use that. Um, Why do you prefer the soft flame? The soft flame? Because I don't think it, it doesn't singe the end of the cigar as much. Um, I don't think it gets, it burns it as hot. Um, but it, a lot of people find it easier because most people smoke outside, so it's a, a lot easier to use a torch. Um, somebody has a torch over there. Ooh. Jet. Fire that up. Jet flame. A jet flame. Oh, yeah. That's a triple. It's a triple. My, it's triple a flame. triple. Bad boy. Right. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Lovely. Did you guys just do that? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. I mean, I just saw you do it, right? Yeah, I just want to make sure yeah, my eyes weren't playing good, tricks right. on me. Okay. <laughs> uh, two veterans of the cigar industry. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, and then you're going to need to store your cigars because obviously you're going to buy them. Um, and so you're going to need a humidor. Uh, humidor is basically a specially manufactured box to keep your cigars in. Um, and they, they maintain the humidity at, um, so they don't dry out. That's which 70% and you want to keep that at room temperature. Um, the, some of the keys in buying a humidor is you want one that has a good seal. That is the absolute most important thing because that's what's going to keep the humidity in. Um, how you determine if it has a good seal, um, there's a number of different ways. Uh, I find the best way is if you simply lift the, the, lift the lid of the humidor and gently close it, you'll actually feel it go from really loose to like a tight fit. If it doesn't have that, um, then it's not, it probably doesn't have a good seal and it's not going to keep the cigars. What do you cigars, think about the glass top humidors? Glass top humidors, some of them, I think they're very showy. Some of them work fine. Um, it's just nothing to go wrong. It is, it is you yeah. want, definitely, you have to keep that out of the sunlight, and actually yes. a lot of light, because it'll, yeah. it'll fade the cigars. You have more of a chance of a leak. Um, you have more chance of right. humidity escaping. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't recommend it, but some people like that. There's nothing wrong with that. We do have some that we sell. Um, so you want a good seal. Um, another, uh, other people will take the lid and they can they drop it, and if you hear it wood against wood, yeah. then that's not a good sign, because it's, it's you have a no sign. seal. No seal, exactly. exactly. You also want um, a heavy lid. One not so heavy that it tips the humidor over, but one that's heavy so it, it actually stays closed. Um, and then you want a good thick, uh, nice thick wood. You don't want anything that's too thin. Um, maybe about a half inch thick, you mm -hmm. would say. Anything thinner than that, um, it's just tends not as... It tends to warp. It, it, it tend, yeah, true, it tends to warp, um, but it, it won't maintain the humidity. Um, and then finally, uh, you want to make sure it's lined with Spanish cedar. Yes. Um, Spanish is the chosen wood a lot because it's very absorptive, absorbent. Um, it will absorb the moisture and release it when right. And it also gives what a lot of people think uh, a pleasant flavor to the cigars. It's right. not overpowering. And um, most humidors are lined with Spanish cedar. You have to stay away if you ever find one from closet cedar. That's that's, that's usually very inexpensive ones. Exactly. Um, and what you want to do when you get your humidor is you want to wipe it down uh, with distilled water or there's special solutions you get. All of the wood inside, that'll charge the humidor and get it ready to go. And you put your humidifier and your hydrometer, which measures the humidity, and you are off and running. I would suggest a digital uh, hydrometer. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, the analog ones are notoriously, notoriously inaccurate. Yeah. Exactly. So the digital ones are much better. Let's talk about the you various. You left, uh, left out the most important thing for a beginning smoker. Cigars. Cigars. There you yes. go. Well, before we get to the cigar, let's finish the humidor. I think it's important to talk about what kind of uh, device you use for humidification. Okay. There are, there are several types of devices. Rob, why don't you uh, explain some of that? I just I you just use the regular Credo, the uh, thing that looks like the um, hockey puck. It looks like a hockey puck or yeah. just a brick of uh, green uh, florist foam. Um, that usually works for me. I so. think th th they work for me. I've used those over the years, but I think for somebody who's a newer cigar smoker, like either the, the jar, there's the a jars. jar that has the, yeah, the crystal that, gels in the jar, and then there's the Boveda packs where you just you plop it in and you're good to oh, go. Yeah, and then when it cool. starts to get hard or the humidity drops, right. you just, just get a new get one. A new they're one, right. not very expensive and they're very, very easy to use. You don't have to think about when you need to change the, or when you right. add, add distilled water. What we have at the Reading store is um, we have a little starter pack called Eduardo Starter Pack. It has a case, a lighter, a cutter, and a, a cigar. And um, wait, case, lighter, cutter, cigar. Yeah. And it's a nice, cute little starter pack. So, and we sell them for nineteen ninety five. Also remember, when you fill your cigar box or humidor up with cigars, you need to open it, if only just for a few seconds, mm -hmm. every few days. Yeah. A little oxygen in there and then close it because a lot of new smokers aren't smoking on a regular basis and if you leave the cigars sit there too long with the humidity inside of it, you can you can get them too damp and you don't you don't you don't let them breathe. So exactly. you know, you, they, they need a little air once in a while. You, you don't have to go crazy, but every few days just crack it open for a few seconds and close it. And that'll be good enough. How about cigars? What are good beginner cigars? Cigars for somebody who's just starting out. A Macanudo? Oh, our cigars. Our oh, cigar. Yeah. Well, our Suaves, of course. I think a actually, Macanudo. Actually, Suave, yeah. I think, well, that's what we have in the starter pack. We actually have a Suave, which we did on the last show. It's in the starter pack, so that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. And then I think a Macanudo. I always point um, a new beginner smoker to the Macanudo line. It's the mildest of all the cigars. You really can't go wrong with them. 
I haven't tasted a bad Mac and Noodle yet. Yeah, I would start, if I was a new cigar smoker, I would start with something milder yeah. as opposed to something fuller bodied because you can always go up and add, keep getting stronger cigars if you like, if you like that. But you can, usually if you start with a really full bodied cigar, you're not going to like it and you just stop smoking cigars. Exactly. Yeah. So, so something like, we don't want that. So. A Romeo, an Excalibur, a Romeo, Suave. Yeah, um, Suave. Yeah, some of the, some of the, uh, the Fuente, the, the moderate, the, the chateaus. chateaus. Double chateaus, double yeah. chateaus. It's Ashton's. very important for beginning Ashton's. smokers oh, to Ashton's. experiment <clears throat> as much as they can. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, fun. That's the fun can. of cigars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Right. I still, but but we we gradually do. start yeah. yourself. You know, don't do what Rob but, did to yeah. me and give me a soprano. Soldier. <laughs> yeah. And come in. I wanted you to quit. <laughs> right. Quit. And you can always come right. in. The store? The people ah! that, the, the yeah. associates, everybody that works in the stores, have a. we hire them because they, they love cigars. And it's a passion. It's a hobby. So they know a lot about it. So come in. Say, I'm a beginning cigar smoker. You know. Don't be afraid to do that. Absolutely. And we, we will help it makes it you. fun for us. It's not just a matter of selling you a cigar. We will help you find cigars that suit your palate and your budget and help you do the kind of experimenting that you can do to find your perfect cigar. Exactly. Yeah, all, we all love talking cigars, so... <laughs> yeah, it's what makes point, it fun. As, to as the you point, can tell. you know, you'll be wanting to run out of the store because we'll just keep talking to you about yeah. it. So. <laughs> Especially we with Captain love, Bob. We all, yeah, and we, we love, love for people to ask for recommendations. <laughs> we I love yeah. Bob. You around, well, the, speak, around the world speak, and the humidor. Speaking of excessive talking, I think it's time for us to talk right, about yeah, Brickhouse and right. review it because... Uh, you know, right. or I'll else we're going to need an hour-long show. I go first. That's what people I'm want. actually loving the ash. I mean, check me out here. Mm -hmm. I think by the end of the show, I can get it all the way down without ashing it at all. So we'll see. Well, um, I more think importantly, it, how's the band? The band is the band's okay. It, <laughs> it's very classic, very old oh school style. Looks like a Victorian type band. That's what I would get as well. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great cigar. Like I said, um, when people ask me for recommendations, I always take them to the Brick House. Um, the construction is beautiful. I can taste the uh, pepper. As soon as I lit it up, I could taste yeah. the pepper actually right away. But mm -hmm. then it's kind of, you know, evened itself out, kind of got a little bit smoother towards, you know, towards the middle. So, excellent cigar. Yeah, I, I like the cigar. I didn't think I would when I first, uh, first smoked it. Mm -hmm. um, I do get the peppery taste. I do get the sweet finish uh, on the end of it. Uh, peppery, coffee taste a little bit. Uh, very well constructed. Uh, J.C. Newman, they put out very, very good products. Yes. So, um, I like the cigar. Paul? I like the cigar. For me, it's a little bit too mild. It's got some pepper. It's got some spice. Uh, for me, it just doesn't have enough of any of those things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. There's oh, nothing well. bad about it. It's just not much. I kind of see where his rating's going. <laughs> Actually, I think, speaking of a beginning cigar smoker, I think this would, oh, be, this would be a very yeah, good cigar. This, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not mild by any stretch, but it does have, um, I think it has a lot of flavor. Um, it's a medium-bodied cigar. I, get, I also get the, the little bit of pepper, a little spice right. in the coffee, yeah. um, but very smooth and extremely affordable. Yes. Uh, I think we may have talked about that when we started out the show, but it's a very aff affordable cigar. It's got great construction. Um, it's f made by one of the oldest family, oldest names, if not the oldest name in the business. And it's a family. Yeah. The Newman's still run it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I can't really add anything to what's been said here, except I agree. It's a good, it's a good beginner cigar. The price is really hard to beat. Mm -hmm. So let's let's rate it. Uh, 4.25. Ah. Uh. God, I hate to agree with you. Yes, <laughs> four two five. You don't know how badly. You know uh. that. Well, I, I I give it. I want to be a little contrarian. I give it a four point four. Uh, really? Yeah, I'm really. going to be a contrarian also. I give it a four point two six. Oh and God! <laughs> <laughs> this is prices really, price right. <laughs> I'm going to be really contrarian, and, and I'm going to give it a three nine five. Oh, uh, bringing it oh, down. Oh, oh, that's not horrible. Nine. Four point three one. Uh, okay. Right. We beat the Mendoza hard. line. We beat the Mendoza line. Right. Okay. Oh, for our favorite part of this episode of this yeah. segment now. New segment. Yeah. Well, your fourth favorite cigar of all your time. Fourth yeah, we're doing our we're cigar. doing our top five favorite cigars, and uh, this week we're on our fourth favorite. So, 
T. Um, my fourth is the Hoyo de Monterey Excalibur, number mm. one. Oh, big and cigar. And the Maduro. That's a big cigar. That's it a is. That's a big, <laughs> a big black cigar. I, mm. Oh, I can handle that. Thank oh. you. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. It's a family okay. show. I didn't say anything wrong. Christian it has audience. a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, which is probably why I like it so much. Um, the binder's Honduran, and the filler is Nicaraguan and Honduran. Cuban seated Dominican as well. So it has a nice blend of everything. The construction's beautiful. I just have a big respect for um, Hoyo de Monterey cigars. I even like them in the smaller pack of the Cigarillos if I'm going somewhere where I don't want such a big cigar. So I love this one. Passionate about that. That's wow. Right. Right. Really? I'm about that. I'm about that. Yeah. passionate yeah. about that. Uh, my fourth favorite cigar is the Oliva V. Um, <laughs> It's a great cigar. It's got a uh, Ecuadorian Habana sun-grown wrapper, and it's got uh, Nicaraguan filler and binder. It's beautifully constructed. The wrapper is gorgeous. Um, Tia will love the band, again. I, um, I love that cigar. It's very smooth, very sweet. It has a nice uh, sweet finish to it. Uh, I think it's just a, a fantastic cigar. Okay, moving along to me, the Arturo Fuente Don Carlos. Yeah. Ooh. Nice camera wrapper. Yep. yep. <laughs> on, the heel, on the heels of the V, a nice powerful smoke. I think it's the best cigar that Fuente makes. So huh? since wow. we're, wow. Just, oh. we're coming up a little shy on time, I'm going to well, be good, brief. Well, okay. The good news is, is uh, my fourth favorite cigar is an Oliva V. Oh. However, I, wow. I specifically really? said the Lancero on this one. I think really? it has a much better. F I think it has the best flavor of all of them. They're all fantastic, but. I think because of the wrapper to filler ratio on a Lancero, which I don't smoke a lot, I love the flavor on that. Um, full bodied, but very, very smooth. It's yes. a wonderful size that just no, it not, not too many people like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. size. Paul? My fourth favorite is the Flor de las Antillas, yeah. which we rated a few weeks ago. <laughs> number one cigar. It was, uh, yes, it was in 2012, it was the number one cigar of the yeah. year. And uh, I just, it's a Nicaraguan Puro. It's a medium-bodied cigar from a company known for putting out full-bodied peppery bombs. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about it. It delivers on all of the complexity and flavor, but it's not a full-bodied bomb. It's just delicious. I just like to say the name. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the Oliva V was... Uh, <laughs> They're in the top. They're, they're in the top twenty-five every year. They're always, year. Right. They're they're always, always top. They're I mean, you always cannot always. go. Yeah. That's the always. best cigar Oliva puts yeah. out. Uh, no oh, question. Yes, about that. absolutely. It's amazing. Uh, don't forget to send in your top five cigars. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll tabulate them, and then once we get to our number one cigar, we'll uh, rate everybody's. Uh, do an online thing and. And, and where uh, should they we'll send? It. Where should they send that? Uh, CCCigars.com. That's. Double C cigars.com. Right. Just Thank want to remind you. everybody again, we talked about it last week, that we are now a family of nine stores in the greater Delaware Valley Beautiful and Freehold, New Jersey, because that's outside the Delaware Valley. And uh, you can find us everywhere, so just go to our website, ccigars.com. Another show is wrapping up, and yeah. I just, on behalf of everybody, I just want to thank you all and everybody say goodbye. Smoke often and smoke happy, folks. Mom, life is too cheap to smoke a long cigar. Another, <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> day. Wow. Another wonderful day with this group. Yeah. Ciao for now, everybody. Bye bye for now, and check out my ash. I did make it last. Oh, it's life is too hey, short to smoke cool. a cheap cigar. That's yes. what it is. On behalf of everybody, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Keep smoking, have fun. Bye bye. Bye. What is it? For how it's much is it? Two forty nine. Two forty nine. Two forty nine. Oh, I like bar Well, with tax. Two forty nine oh, okay. a cigar. It's very, very good. Um, I like it. I like it because it is it's complex, um, with a different wrapper uh, on it. So I like it. It's very smooth. Burns perfectly. It's very good. Yeah, it does burn perfectly. Yeah, it does burn nice. And we do make them with a regular Connecticut wrapper, a Corojo wrapper, mm -hmm. and a Maduro wrapper. Yes, we do. Yep. True. And these are also made in our little family factory in uh, Santiago. Santiago, Santiago in the Dominican in Republic. Republic by loving, caring hands. And you can see all that on our website, which just happens to be at ccigars.com. That's double, double C, C cigars. cigars.com. <laughs> and now we're going to... Uh, we do make these one at a time. So. <laughs> we do make them one at a time. So, <laughs> yeah, loving hands. Yes. Are we going to rate this now? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Paul, we'll start out with you. I give it a four and a half. It's a perfect little smoke. Yeah. Given what it is, the price, the, the taste, I'll, I'll give it a 4.25. I give it a four and a half. I also give it a four and a half. Four and a half. 
So we're at 4.46. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I smoke these all the time What's at the store. You time? ruined it. Yep. What's wrong with you, you man? brought it down. Yeah. Brought it down. All right, the lovely Miss T will tell us about our next cigar. Yeah, our next cigar is a Brick House. It's actually a Nicaraguan Puro with a Nicaraguan Habano, Habano wrapper. The sizes are Churchill, Corona, Gordo, Robusto, and Toro. And the taste profile on this one is notes of earth, cedar, pepper, and coffee, complemented by a toasty, slightly sweet finish. Toasty. Sounds like a really good mm -hmm. cigar. You know, a lot of people don't know about the brick house cigars like they walk right by it in the humidor i mean really? they don't even, yes they don't even look at it and i have to direct their attention to it and as soon as they smoke one they say oh i'm so glad you showed me the brick house was this a, i think this was in a top 25 a few years ago yes it, is. it, was. it, was. it was yeah it was. absolutely it's i think ever, it was a 92 of, if i'm not mistaken probably and it's always it's every year it may not be in the top 25, but it's always in the, th the, the top value cigars yes. that they have. Because this yes. is not a very expensive cigar. No, no, no. not at all. No. I think this is only like five cents. Yeah, in the $5 range. $5 Something range. like that, yeah. Good value. Yeah. Very yeah. good value. And it's, it's a very J. tasty cigar. It's made by J.C. Newman. Yes. Yep. And it's one of the first two cigars to come out of their Nicaraguan factory. This and the El Baton. And probably why I like it so much is because it's a Puro. Mm-hmm. It's actually a little thicker for your normal Robusto. It is. Almost so a double Robusto. I think it's a 54 ring gauge. 54 54 ring gauge. Yeah. It's good. I didn't want yeah. to put the bar full down. Damn. Very nice. Damn. Can Very nice. Now I'll pick it up later. Uh, I guess we have uh, Paul in the fields now. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Paul. You, uh, I'm, busy. I'm busy doing something far more important. Yes. Great. Yes. We'll <laughs> give him time to take the mud off his boots and light a cigar. And we're going to hear this week all about... American-made cigar. Mud, mud on his boots is from the good old U.S. of A. Yeah, yes. that's it. American mud. American mud. <laughs> Chef flags. First yeah. of all, if, if we go back historically, in the 16 and 1700s, there were very few cigars here in the United States. Well, it wasn't the United States yet, but there were very few cigars here. And Americans weren't really very hip on cigars back then mostly because the tobacco that was grown here, and tobacco was a very important crop in the U.S., uh, the tobacco wasn't really suitable for cigars. It was mostly used for snuff and for chew, and so Americans wanted to consume American tobacco, and of course it was much less expensive than imported stuff. Um, eventually, cigars came here, and they were mostly in the hands of the well-to-do. They were mostly Cubans and Dominicans. And it stayed that way right up until the end of the Civil War. And at the end of the Civil War, all of a sudden, the industry divided into two pieces in the U.S. Uh, and the two pieces were high-end luxury cigars, which were primarily from Cuba and were called Havanas and cigars that the average Joe could buy and smoke. And those were pioneered by pioneers, actually. They were uh, the folks moving out west after the Civil War, riding in their Conestoga wagons. And in fact, that's why inexpensive cigars, beginning back then, were called stogies, because nice. the guys in the Conestoga wagons. Anyway. They continued making cigars in the United States, and that business grew very, very fast. In fact, by the end of the 1800s, virtually every city in the United States had hundreds of cigar factories. There were 42,000 of them in the United States at that time, uh, although most of them were two or three women rolling cigars in a house. <laughs> but nonetheless, there were some major brands back in those days, like... J.C. Newman, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Fink out of Texas, and Bayouk. Those are names you might not know, but they had many, many brands. If there were 42,000 factories, there were over 150,000 brands of cigars at the time. Paul, weren't, weren't there clusters of factories and cities that you would not normally think of as yeah. hotbeds of cigars? Purposes. Like Cleveland, Ohio yeah. in particular, yeah. and uh, uh, some in Connecticut. And in Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton. Also, that's Trenton. Bay Oak, wasn't that in Philadelphia? Bay Oak was Bay in Oak Philadelphia. Was in Philadelphia. There's a lot of factories. They in were the original. Yeah. They were the original makers of Philly cigars. Yes. Percocy too. Right up yeah. the street. There was yeah, everywhere. Red Lion. Yeah. A lot of them. Red Lion. Red Lion. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of cigar factories. Or manufacturers. 
The uh, U.S. made cigar industry gr uh, continued to grow a lot right up until World War I, and it, World War I actually had a very bad effect on cigars because all of a sudden the government was putting cigarettes in our uh, in our GI's mess kits and sending them now? off to, yeah. to oh, fight the God. war Holy with cow. cigarettes in their kits. And that's really the first time that cigarettes surpassed cigars in popularity. Um, the, w the cigar industry's answer to that was to introduce machine-made cigars and try to bring the price down and bring the volume up. And for decades, machine-made cigars uh, really supplanted uh, premium cigars or handmade cigars as the dominant factor in the industry. That changed again in the 1950s, and there were a couple of things that caused that to happen. Uh, one of the biggest things that changed the, 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 the complexion of the cigar industry in the U.S. was that uh, one guy who had a virtual monopoly on tobacco in Cuba uh, got into a, a bit of a tussle with the Cigar Rollers Union in Cuba and announced to them that unless they did things his way, he was going to close down his whole operation in Cuba and move it all to Trenton, New Jersey. <laughs> and, he, and he did. Wow. Trenton and, makes. And, uh, and what the world takes. And the world takes. Yeah. And uh, that brought a whole lot of premium cigar making back to the U.S. And then, of course, when uh, the revolution took place in Cuba and Castro rose to power, a lot of the best cigar makers in Cuba came over here and began rolling cigars in Little Havana. And that was the birth time of some of the brands that we know well as Miami-made cigars, like uh, La Gloria Cubana and mm. even Padron, and there were others. And they emerged real big in the 90s during the cigar boom. They became the major brands. The boom put so much demand on those little factories in Miami that most of them were bought up by the big, big cigar companies and the factories were moved back out into Latin America where they could produce in serious volume. Mm -hmm. What caused the boom, do you know? Nobody I really knows. Some people say it was the, the launch of Cigar Aficionado magazine, mm -hmm. oh. but I think that's uh, maybe trying to put too much credit in one place. I, you know, uh, give the devil his due. I really think that Marvin Shankman with uh, Cigar Fish and had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Because once the Hollywood stars start live from Studio C. Are <laughs> 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 oh, your digs. It's in our new dig, Studio C is Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night show all about cigars. And we're going to start out tonight with one of our Eduardo Barber Bowls, and T's going to tell you all about it. T. T. No. Did you know? T. Hey. No. Um, but this, it's a double wrapper. It's a Maduro oh, it's and a, uh, it's an Ecuadorian? It's Connecticut. 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 Ecuadorian. Okay, I was close. Um, I love this cigar. It's a quick smoke. That's why we call it the quickie. Um, go ahead, Rob. What else do you think about it? <laughs> it's a Dominican filler and binder. So, with a uh, Dominican Maduro wrapper and a Connecticut seed Ecuadorian wrapper. It's got two, it's got a barber pole. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Quite so, close enough. It's close. Yeah. It's called a barber pole, quickie. It's only, uh, what, 4 by 40? Yes. 4 and a half by 40 Something like that. 4 by Something 40. Like 4 by 40. Yeah, it's, um, it's called a quickie because it only takes about uh, 10, 15 minutes to smoke. Yeah, basically, if you don't have a lot of time, a, a quickie's the way to go. Especially yeah. this well, time of year. No matter how In much time smell. you have, but, well, never mind. <laughs> uh, I gave you the line, Paul. That's right. You blew it. I felt like... <laughs> I thought you did a good job. I thought I did it right. Yeah. You did. Ah, moving along. <laughs> so do you want to... What do you think about it? I like it. I always have liked the concept of a quickie <laughs> cigar. Cigar, <laughs> right? And, like and I, I particularly like the barber pole because the flavor changes up a lot. It does. It does. Yes, it, it does. absolutely does. And almost, Paul, almost every other puff. And Paul, yes. at your age, a quickie is about all you can do. If I'm lucky. If you're lucky. Uh, it's good. I, I actually it's spicier than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. It's got. I can really. I can f actually feel this on the, the tip of my tongue. And you're right. The flavors do change. And I guess 
we, we we always get the Maduro at the, the head of the cigar? The Maduro part of the wrapper? Or is it yes. sometimes going to be the... Usually, yeah. on these, the ones they make is usually... The Maduro. Is Maduro, yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. You can get a different flavor otherwise. Yeah. It's Very a no, it's it, it, to me it's a novelty cigar, and if you like the rotating taste, and I do, uh, it's a cool little cigar. 